Hello friends! Today I want to give a first introduction into game hacking and botting. Um, disclaimer, the information provided in this video is for educational purposes only. I do not take any responsibility for your actions and I condemn any illegal activity. This shall not be used against any games TOS and or have a negative impact in any way to you, your hardware or other players or companies. Furthermore, I want to make clear that I am not an expert. This is a passion project. I may get things wrong, there may be better solutions than presented in this video. I do my research and I constantly learn new things myself. Feedback is welcome as always. Now let's get into it. As the title suggests, today I will take a look at click bots, auto clickers and similar. The goal is to write a program that can detect and react to things displayed on the screen. This is really something very basic. There are way more sophisticated methods of game hacking and botting that we will look at uh, further down in the line, but this is a very simple concept. It is hard to detect by any anti-cheat or anti-hacking software, and you can achieve quite a lot of things with those simple techniques. Okay, so we will achieve these goals by accessing the position and color of pixels and simulate input from mouse and keyboard. As the target I chose Zuma. Some of you might know this game. It was somewhat big uh, hit back in 2004. The game itself does not really matter all that much. The techniques presented can be used with pretty much any game to achieve various goals. Let's take a look at the game first to see what's going on. Basically the player controls a frog who shoots colored balls at moving targets. When there are three balls in a row they get removed. You have the choice between two different colored balls to shoot and you can switch between them with the right mouse button. Shooting is simply done by aiming with the mouse and then left clicking. Therefore the bot needs to know the colors of the balls that can be shot. There is already somewhat of a challenge since the position of the frog changes depending on the map. And the bot also needs to know the position and colors of the target balls on the map. Or at least he needs to know one of the balls with fitting color that can be shot, meaning there is no other ball in the way. Okay, so as a first step, let's look at how to get the position and color of a pixel. Ideally, we want some form of user interface. Just something very basic. We press a button and we get the pixel position and color of the pixel where our mouse currently is. So let's start with the interface first. Create a new Windows console project. In our main, we just define an infinite loop. If we press a certain key, we get into an if statement. I choose numpad keys because they are probably not used otherwise and definitely not within the game. Easy enough, if we press 0 on the numpad, we get out of the loop and the program ends. If we press 1, we get the mouse position and if we press 2, we get the pixel color at the mouse position. The sleep1000 statement is just there to prevent us from executing the same if body too many times because we pressed the button too long. So how to get the mouse position? Well, the pixel positions on the screen are given in a coordinate system, which the origin is on the top left of the screen. Going to the right increases the x value of the position and going down increases the y position. But hang on a minute, we are not really interested in the whole screen. We are only interested in the game window screen. The same logic applies, but the origin of the coordinate system in this case is the top left of the game window. We can get the position of our cursor with get cursor pos. And we can use screen to client function to translate those coordinates from the screen coordinates to the ones inside the game window. Get cursor position just needs an address of a point to write the information to. Screen to client needs the point already filled with the information about the screen coordinate as well as a handle to the device context. This handle we get with getDC function. getDC function needs a handle to the game window, which we can get with find window function. Now this function finally takes arguments we know. First parameter we can just put null, and second parameter is the title of the game window. Now let's check it out. Before going into the while loop, I already get the window handle because it can be useful in many cases. Inside the if statement body, we first define a point where the coordinate will be stored. Then we get the device context and then we get the mouse position in screen coordinators and store them into our point P. Then we convert the coordinates 
and then we output them. And of course, never forget to release the device context after being done. Okay, well, that works pretty well as we can see. Now what about pixel color? Actually, we just need one additional function to achieve that, which is getPixel. GetPixel takes the device context handle, the X coordinate and the Y coordinate of the pixel. Easy enough, we already know how to get all those. Return value is of type colorref, which contains the RGB values of the pixel. RGB stands for red, green and blue. We can also output those individual values with uh, get R value, get G value, and you guessed it, get B value. All right, so now we know how to get pixel position and pixel colors. Pretty neat. What did we need again for our bot? Oh yeah, we need the position of the frog. So let's see, how would we go about that? Well, there are many ways. One option would be to somehow find out what map we are on and then know from that where the frog is, because the frog is always at the same position for a specific map design. But, uh, what if there will be more maps added at some point? Not really realistic, but hey, could happen, right? So what if we just go through the whole game window and look for a specific pixel color which is on the frog? Then we know where he is. Well, that works only if there is some specific color which is only on the frog and nowhere else. Let's take a look at the frog. Those shiny parts on the eye look quite promising. And yes, those are really quite distinct from anything else on the screen. If we look for the first eye starting top left and scanning the screen, it turns out that this specific color over more than one pixel can only be found at the eyes of the frog. Nice! After having found the first eye, we know that the second one must be close by. Since we start at top left and we go down the screen and to the right, we only need to look at the right of the first eye. Not too close to not end up in the first eye again, but also not too far since the second eye must be close. Then having found both eyes, the center of the frog is in the middle between those two coordinates. So some simple school math does the trick. Add the two coordinates up and divide by two gives us pretty much accurate where the center of the frog is. Wonderful! But actually wait. Why does it take so long to find those two coordinates? This might be okay when it comes to the frog, but we can't wait that long to find the position of the moving balls. Before we decide on a target, we already lost the game. Turns out the function getPixel is actually very slow. Then why did I even show you this method? Well, if all you need to know is the current color of one pixel at a certain position, it is totally fine to use this method. And in many situations, that is really all you need. But when it comes to bigger areas and searching for something on the screen, we will need a different approach. That one I will talk about in my next video. But for now, I hope you had a pleasant watching and or listening experience. Please do give me some feedback, it really does help out big time. Consider subscribing if you would like to see more and I will talk to you pretty soon.